Hello, Kyle, Kyle. McLaughlin. How are hey, you guys? coming in? Hello. Hello. Coming in and landing and rolling off the table. I'm you, here. You've got to love like where you're at right now. I do, man. No, I'm not talking to <laughs> <about> you. <laughs> Just in terms of like, standing. because I mean, not that it ever completely went away, but the the rejuvenated obsession with Twin Peaks just has you like, I can't tell you how many people I told yesterday you were coming in and they were like, oh my God, oh no. And it's like, it's, it's just so cool to, to see, you know? Thanks, man. The fans are definitely intense. Yeah. The Twin Peaks fans, bless their hearts. I mean, they are, they've been following this. They've been wanting this to happen for 25, 26, 27 years now, so. Are you glad that it took this long so, so you know, Poetically, it made sense that we left it and said, we'll see you in 25 years, yeah, and then 26 it, years later, yeah. here we are. I think it was fun. I mean, I also, going back to the fans, I mean, I think they were largely responsible for getting David and Mark to start thinking again about, are there any more stories that they want to tell? They just kept the drum beat going, you know? How yeah. long was it in the works for before it finally said, okay, we're going to do it? Like, how was it a year that they thought about it? or uh, You know, they, I think once they kind of came together and found the way back in, it didn't take long. I know early on in the process, David reached out to me and and said, um, I need to talk with you, and but I can't talk with you over the phone. So we met in New York where he was staying, and he said, um, we're going to go back to Twin Peaks, and he wanted to know if I wanted, if I was up for, for going back. And I said, David, I, said, I never left, please. So, <laughs> um, so from that point on to when we finally started filming was a Boy, it's about a year and a half. So what is, oh, let me ask you about what David Lynch question because is what did, we had John C. McGinley and he was talking about Oliver Stone and now he's a guy uh, who has a vision and that's it and you have to fit in his vision. David Lynch on the outside seems like kind of a crazy guy. When you work with him, is he is he kind of collaborative or does he have a vision and you got to fit into it and that's it? Super collaborative. Oh, he is. Yeah, and and it's just a kind of a regular guy. It just happens that the worlds he creates and lives in are obviously highly unusual. So, uh, when you step on the set with him, it's the it's just the greatest environment in the world. Very collaborative. There's just a lot of joy. There's a lot of love going on, and he really he really just he depends upon the involvement of his actors. And he's not a yeller or a screamer? Not at all. Okay. I think he's, he's an unbelievable talent, but I'm just terrified of him. Just because of his work, <laughs> I would never want to meet him. I'm like, I don't care what you tell me. This <laughs> no, guy's got some demons. Stay nicest, away from me. He's the nicest me. guy in the world. All those demons, don't worry about those. Those he, are just in his head. So he made, he made Robert that. Blake creepier, than the, <laughs> right. which was a miracle. Right. That was that great. Possible? When they first announced that it was... they So when it, it comes out that this is happening and Showtime's going to do it and everything, yeah. um, there was a moment... Where David Lynch was like, I'm not getting involved in this, you know, this before it started filming and everything. There mm. was like, it, it almost looked like it wasn't going to happen, or at least it wasn't going to happen with David Lynch. Was there ever before it happened this fear for you that, oh my God, I've already agreed to do this, and if David Lynch isn't doing it, it's not going to work? Well, the only way it would be Twin Peaks is if David was. So directing. would you have been able to step out and say? Well, I mean, there it. was there was nothing going forward. Yeah, I don't know what the what the plans were. I don't. I know David just felt like that he had a vision. And he had a, a a way that he wanted to do it, that he felt he needed to do it, um, and that was. Uh, why he and David Nevins at Showtime sat down and, and they worked through whatever issues there were. Um, I don't think it was that big of a deal, and they, they came to a, an agreement, and so they kept going forward. But I was, yeah, I was disappointed when I heard that it might not, right. you know, happen. I think could, a lot of people could, were. Sure. Yeah, I mean, could you have done, let's say they came to you, though, and they said, all right, we got fucking Mick G, you know that old director from the, uh, yeah, yeah. all the 90s videos? Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember it. And he's going to come in and do it. Would you have done it with him? I mean, I, you know, it's the, uh, pr probably not. I mean, the only way that, that works, the Twin Peaks works, is with David. Yeah. You know? What was the first thing you ever auditioned for and got? Do you remember? Uh, yeah. Uh, Dune, actually. <laughs> that was your first, and that, that was, was my, That was my first movie. <laughs> <laughs> that was 83, yeah. Up to that point, I had just been doing theater. I noticed, how big of a part did you have in Dune, or was it a small part? Uh, he was the pretty much the lead. He was the ruler of the known universe. So okay. That, that's, a, that's actually really not a bad role to start that's, with, that's right? That's quite good. Just yeah. starting at the top, you know. <laughs> that's did that's you never look? a small part. No. no. <laughs> we need you for the leader of the known <laughs> universe. universe. Can you handle it? Yeah. I'm like, well, I think so. Did you really I went to school. turn down the part of uh, in Platoon that Charlie Sheen played? Uh, you know, Oliver met, and we talked about it, and he wanted me to do it, and I hesitated. It was, in a, and I gotta remember, it was in a completely different situation. So it was a Dino De Laurentiis at that time, DEG production, and I had a, a contract with Dino 
from Dune. I was signed up for the rest of my life almost at that time. Um, so I just, I didn't really respond to it and get back to Oliver and then Blue Velvet came along and I was like, okay, I'm going to do Blue Velvet. And then, and then Oliver took Platoon elsewhere and then, and then was Charlie. Did you ever look back on that? I always wonder if guys look back on that. We, everyone says yes and no and Platoon may have been what it was because of Charlie, but do you ever look back on that and go like, gosh, I could have done a good job in that and been a part of it. I mean, I could have done a good job and it would have been an, an incredible adventure. I, you know, but then where I am now, who knows if that would have happened. David, yeah, because then if you didn't do Blue Velvet, yeah, David then... gave me the script of Blue Velvet when we were shooting Dune, so I felt, well, this is, and I, and I really like David, you know, and I said, I, this is, and Blue Velvet was, as you, I don't know if you've all seen it, but sure. an incredibly disturbing, compelling film. Yeah, and I related so, to it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, uh, this one really, this one really excites me, you know. That, that, but it's also, if you don't do Blue Velvet, right, then... You probably don't get to Twin Peaks. Quite possibly. And then, the, so that becomes yeah. the thing in your mind is like. Where, yeah, jo choices, decisions. I mean, at the time you sort of look back, but then as you get older, I think you look back and say, no, actually, this all worked out the way it's supposed exactly. to. Exactly. It's so. this actor butterfly effect thing. Exactly. But I, right. I remember hearing uh, uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus from uh, uh, being interviewed, and she said when she auditioned for Seinfeld and they offered her the part, she was genuinely concerned it was a bad career move. <laughs> it's just like this thing where, like, you just never, you don't really know. Like, no. you know, you can see a great script or, a or you know, you don't know what's going to be, like, this huge thing. And then you got to go, uh, imagine the thing would be like, I'm not going to make any money off this thing. And yeah. she probably made, like, a billion dollars. Yeah, it was so you, successful, you, and she was so great in it, too. Yeah, yeah. What was uh, Dennis Hopper, how much interaction did you have with him? Uh, quite a bit, actually, on Blue Velvet. And uh, Dennis had been uh, rehab for a couple of years, and just the greatest guy wait he was in rehab for a couple of years he had been yeah he'd start he had clean he'd been clean sober for a couple of years oh i think he was actually in a rehab for a couple of years okay <laughs> <laughs> who knows no but he'd been clean for for a while and was just the greatest guy so totally together perfect for frank very frightening I always say I didn't have to do much as an actor, but react to him. Right. Yeah. So, and he was kind of on Apocalypse Now. I don't think he was sober. I don't think so. That would that. <laughs> I don't think so. But that's one of my favorite movies ever. Do you like that movie? I love that great. movie. It's amazing. Too. People did, blasted yeah. Brando in it. The critics killed Brando, but I thought he was great. Unbelievable. It was just weird and quiet and shadowed and just bizarre dialogue. I thought. Where, it was... are, you, where are you from, Willis? Willard. Where are you from? Yeah. Oh, Ohio, <laughs> sir. <laughs> yeah, is that great? That just, oh, I love it. I you know how uncomfortable it must have been for Martin Sheen to have to stand there and look at Brando in this hot room and yeah. know that you're improv <laughs> with this fucking... Very yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So when you're working with David Lynch... I don't know. I'm not asking I'm you. I'm being cute. When you're, <laughs> <laughs> do you... Yes, the scenes that, like, we as, as viewers will watch and, like, try to figure out because i think that's part of the attraction of twin peaks right is that you're watching yeah. and the, and it always it provokes discussion at the very least absolutely do you know what lynch's intentions are in these scenes or does he keep all that close to the vest he, he keeps it pretty close to the vest and i don't grill him on it i really just concentrate on what i need to know as an actor and, and my journey through i had heard that he brought on uh that who was the actress uh from the first season that he brought on uh and played an, an asian man raquel I've, welch after she was off the, uh... no, it wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't that works for me. Raquel I had that Wells. image in my head straight away. I mean, come on, Raquel Welch, um, you get that out of your head. But he, he, one of the characters in the first season, right, came back as an Asian man. I didn't even know about this. Yeah, well, so, right? so I'm watching this video, right. like the eight things you didn't know about Twin Peaks last right. night. Oh, yeah, there's like conspiracy theory videos Maybe out there, right? Okay. Because they said, and I. Uh, David Lynch used to make all the cast members make out with each other before every scene. <laughs> <laughs> we did? <laughs> Mr. Oh, Mr. that's right. It was dark. <laughs> Mr. Tojimura? Do you remember that character? No. Okay, so that was an actress that had already been on the show okay. and was killed off or was, was written off or whatever. Okay. And so what I saw on the video, it said that uh, Lynch didn't tell anybody on the set that this was that actress and that right. she showed up in full makeup and that he, all the actors were told that this was... Like a a, right. a, a, a a Asian actor right, who's in. very very famous in Japan or something Classic like that. David. Yeah, is that something? How great is that? I would feel like I don't if I'm like trusting you to be the director. <laughs> what, are you, what are you tricking me for? Uh, he's got a lot of yeah. He loves that kind of stuff. He's he. We have a lot of laugh laughs on the set. I yeah, mean, he loves a good joke. So he wouldn't necessarily do that as some kind of mysterious method. He would do that as like this will be funny. This will be funny. Yeah, trick that's everybody. totally like that. Yeah, he's totally that way. <laughs> is it hard when you work with a guy like that who's collaborative and you're having fun on the set and then you have 
to go work with somebody who's not collaborative, and all of a sudden your you know, input is not going to be as well received? Everything is different. Every situation is different. You just, you, as an actor, you kind of roll with the punches, do what you need to do. But I got to say, by and large, the, the, the directors that I've worked with are all, I mean, I think they all need the actor's contribution, and they all, you know, know that. Some are some are more open and sort of more available than others, but they're, they're all pretty much the same. Who was it that said, was it Jeff Daniels we might have had in that said that, uh, I think it's uh, Sorkin, he said, like, he wants it to yes. the letter. To the letter. Mm. Yeah. The way he wrote. Like, yeah. that's his vision. Yeah. He's just a, a very, I guess, controlling with his vision. Yeah. And, you know, obviously it's successful, but he said, like, you have to be 100% ready. Yeah. All, like, he doesn't fuck around. Like, some guys Spot just on. want yeah. it a certain way. And yeah. I'm actually Siri talk, talk texting. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you just did the whole show. Make sure you get all that down. How many, um, by the way, how many people? Well, Sorkin is like. I mean, that is Sorkin. His writing is really important. It's it's rhythmic. It's there for a purpose. You know. So I I get that about Aaron. Have you um, worked with wor- him? No, I've never worked okay. with him. I know, I've met him a few times. He's brilliant, obviously. But, um, and that's usually the case in television, in particular. Um, writers they want you to sort of you know they put it in there for a reason. So you you got to go with it. And if you want to make any changes, you ask ahead of time. But but by and large, you just go with what you, what's there. Film can be a slightly more you know flexible. I think. Why do you think that is? I think you have more time, um, and the, the director is right there, and the writer's right there. And sometimes with, the, with television, with the writing staff, something is setting something up for a future episode, or the writers are maybe not so close by. They're in the writer's room. You're on the set. So to get there okay, to make a change, it takes time. It costs you time. That's a good it, point, too, about setting something up for a later episode. Yeah. Or it could be the... You, something you, like that, yeah. Uh, now, are you comfortable asking if you want to change something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If there's something I read, I, I might, I'll might i send a couple notes in, but you've got to do it ahead of time. Well, like the, the way you would say... that's Because I go on auditions. I never book anything. I've booked, I think, one... We know. Uh, we watch TV and movies. Yes. Not after this show. The <laughs> Investigation <laughs> Discovery sure Crime Scene Reenactment Show, where I played a Mexican, uh, like... Um, Drug lord. That's type That's, casting right there. I could totally see <laughs> yeah, that. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't have any words. Weren't you able to just draw from your childhood and experiences? I had a, yes, El Crapo. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had a gun, and I had a, I had a mimic shooting a guy. And it's just right. like, there's no lines. There's no. It's all like crime scene reenactment. And I remember on the set, I went. I literally said, I went bang. Yeah. And they go cut. They're like, hey, that was great. Could you just not say the word bang? <laughs> Yo, hey, could you not shoot like a five-year-old boy who's playing? Uh, yeah. uh, that, ha- that happens with the best of them, believe me. Yeah. You, you can't that, help it. That, the, the thing is like you, ha- you, have, you go into that thing, and I would rather just read the words as is instead of fucking improv. Yeah, dude, I don't know, man. It's so uncomfortable. Acting in general, just trying to be somebody else is the hardest thing in the world. I don't like, it. I like to say things my own way. It's, it's usually little things. It doesn't change the meaning, mm. but there's certain phrases that are just a little mm. easier to say a certain way. Like, I would sure. never speak like that. Even though you're playing someone else, you're yeah. still, it's still it's your mouth. You would never there. use. Yeah. Yeah, you know? or, 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 you know, a period here. I heard that Christopher Walken, when he gets a script, which is probably why he's so interesting, will will, will write out his dialogue, or someone writes it out, and removes right. all punctuation. I do that sometimes. <laughs> yes. Yes, and Christopher Walken as well. Um, well <laughs> we all do Christopher Walken. No, we, we do. My all my impersonations sound the same. No, 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 they're not really anybody. It is the same. Yeah, I do. Um, I do. No, I, I do. Removes all the punctuation, or he has his own way, own way of speaking rhythmic, rhythmically and stuff. But um, and I think that too is sometimes it's easier to say something a certain way or not but then on the other side you go like yeah but maybe it's kind of good for the character that it's a little bit awkward and you should say it this way so then I make that argument and try and you know, confuse myself yeah that's, that's a good point but what type is that type of stuff you'll you'll change something like like I don't see the character doing this or like I would never say it in this way you know I used to go off just my reaction and, cha- and, and say oh I gotta change this and now I'm kind of like well let me live with it and see wh- what it really does how it affects the character or, or that scene or that moment or the reaction what I'm trying to get from the person across me so I give it more of a chance now actually so you'll actually do it the way that it's yeah, written and just see, see if what, it's comfortable yeah, and see if I can make it work or why it's there do you at all uh, get tired of the fact that, especially now that uh, the series is back in the zeitgeist, mm. um, every time you take a sip of coffee, whoever is around you is just looking at you to see, if is he going to say the line? Is he going to spit say out the coffee the first line. of all? Is he going to say it? <laughs> uh, I get a lot of free coffee, which is nice. Yeah, I would uh, imagine. I would imagine. <laughs> uh, you know, I've always loved coffee, so that's easy. Um, but it's, you know, it's fun being back as, as Cooper. He's, you like he's, it. He's a great character. He's you, a great character. Are there, like, what's the, because I've seen you as Coop, and obviously I, I watch you on Sex in the City many times. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, probably, dude, first of all, how many 
fucking cougs are throwing it at you. From <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm assuming you're just like literally getting like offers of blowjobs by 38 year old women as you walk down the street. And you're about to get one from Sorry, an ex Mexican cartel leader. <laughs> <laughs> I must be going to the wrong places. I don't know. And when you shoot at me, I'm gonna go bang. Um, no, but like, do you? What's like the the most out there role? Away from your personality, because you you you're sitting here, and I feel like I'm talking to Coop. I right. feel like I'm talking to your character from Sex and City. It's not that's not like out there for your personality type. What is the the craziest thing you've done where it's like that's just not me, and that's the thing that's like really hard as an actor. I think going completely away Separate from yourself. You yeah, know? yeah. No, it was the role in the current Twin Peaks where I play a character. Where he's known as either the doppelganger, evil Coop, or Mister C, and he was a character that was completely different departure for me. I mean, he was um, no humanity, remorseless, just a bad, bad guy. Like me. Yeah. Pretty much like yeah. me. In podcast. fact, in yeah. fact. <laughs> um, and that was really challenging um, and uh, took took me a while to sort of get into that place. Um, but it was ultimately really successful. And David Lynch was tremendous help. Yeah. And you have, you have like that theater background too. So you, I'm assuming you can like, you know, it's almost like, you know, fighters can fight different styles. You could do anything. So if they told you to come in and be like a, a drug, a drug kingpin from the hood, could you go and play that, that role? I'd have to find my own way in on that. That would be tricky. That would be tricky. <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you that, that might take some time. It's <laughs> the only rule Lewis knows. I know. Drug no. kingpin. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you played, Cla oh, was it Claudius and Hamlet? Yeah. I've yeah. never seen Hamlet, uh, but I imagine and that's a difficult role to play. Shakespeare seems like a really Im 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 uncomfortably hard thing to do. It's uh, challenging, for sure, but it's the writing is, is amazing. And when you start saying those words and you get into the rhythm of the poetry, it just, you realize why he's so brilliant. It just makes complete sense as, a, as an actor. It really, I don't know, it's something about saying those words that really... I agree. Know. I'm not as educated as Jim, so I don't I don't know anything about these, these Hamlet Wait things. Wait a minute, Jim's educated. But, Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. But, we have a low bar here. Um, <laughs> I've always been curious about the film show. Bye. Of the, course. The, 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 I was just waiting. How many times? It took course, a while yeah, to get to Showgirls. Yeah, you're going to get there. But like, so oh, you were in Showgirls. He's a star yeah, of was. Showgirls. Yes. 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 So when Show I masturbated to you. Well, there you go. Well, not See? to you. What? To the no, movie. of course not. Yeah. So, you know, but I was a part of it. Absolutely. So. He said right. the same thing when Kevin Bacon came <laughs> in for the worst. <laughs> I understand. For fun, <laughs> was that for fun, Luz? I know. When that, movie, Sleepers. <laughs> when that movie is coming out, uh, I think it was the director behind it, was trying to enforce upon everybody that this is not this kind of gratuitous movie that you think it is it's actually this much bigger thing and there's right. religious connotation to it and it's this big big uh picture thing yes. that he sees yes. and then people went and saw it and they were like no it's the thing i thought it was before <laughs> exactly it's not, it's i get to jerk off to jesse spano <laughs> yeah. yes were you uh were you of the opinion that the movie was going to be as he described it or as we Assumed it was, and then found out it would was. Be. Was the first working title "Saved by the Bell Tits"? Saved by the Bell Tits. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been. Um, it was no. When we when I signed on, I thought uh, I I read it as he was describing. It. I was like, oh, this is going to be a pretty kind of a brilliant expose of of Vegas. It's Paul Verhoeven, amazing director. I happen to love RoboCop. It's one of my favorite movies. I, I love like, RoboCop. So I was like, okay, this is going to be great. Basic Instinct was pretty incredible. Um, Esther House wrote the script, so you know you're like, okay. That's two good things. And then you got, you got an interesting story, an unknown girl playing the lead, great. And I got to play, a, the idea was I got to play a character that was off type for me. So right. I was like, kind of, he was a, kind of a sleaze bag. And I thought, oh, this could be interesting to do. So put all that together. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Cut to. <laughs> and during the filming, I was like, this actually looks like it's pretty good. The show, they made amazing shows they did. The scenes were okay. I was like, no, this feels like it's going to be okay. And so what do you do? Show up at the premiere and go, what the fuck? I, what happened? Yeah, I was just like, this, oh my gosh. How what, far what into it at the premiere were you like, or had you seen it before? Pretty much, no, I pretty much the first scene. I was like, okay, okay, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> were you embarrassed? Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was embarrassing. It was, uh, you know, it was one of those things where, well, that one didn't go right, you know. So what do we do? Well, we just keep moving. Forward. Do you feel like um, a sense of ownership of it, or do you kind of just move away from it and go, all right, well, I fucked up. I shouldn't have taken that role. You know, it's found in, it's found in a great audience, like you were Sorry. saying. It's turned yeah. into something that's sort of it's a like classic, a, a camp, yeah. camp classic, as they say, and it's got, and it's got an audience. And I'll still go back People to it really love it. Yeah, and people love watching it. They have a fun, they have a good laugh. It is entertainment. Right. After, we're in the business of entertainment, after all, so it's found its way. It wasn't, I don't think, the intention of the, of the original intention, but, uh, you know, it's got a life afterwards, so... 
so be it. Lives on. Can I ask you another question about uh, a thing I saw in the in the conspiracy uh, videos about uh, Twin Peaks? You're spending far too much time in the conspiracy <laughs> chat rooms. Well, I yes. mean, you know, we all <laughs> see the other chat rooms he goes in. No, I don't want to know. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> not, no, we, we can't <laughs> legally. We can't talk we about can't. that anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> um, so. Uh, this is and this is like you know, thirty year old gossip at this point. But who killed Laura? Is it? Is, <laughs> Let's yeah. go back. I didn't watch around. all the way till the end. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm way behind. <laughs> you got some catching up to do. Is the reason that your character's relationship with the Audrey character is the reason that that kind of uh, fizzled out after like the first season or whatever mm. because you were in a relationship? And the person you, uh, with Laura Flynn Boyle, mm. and she was uncomfortable with the on scene, on set chemistry that you guys had. No, the main reason was, I felt the main reason was because um, she's in high school. Audrey's in high school, right? And I just felt, you know what, Cooper is not this. We can push things, and we do. But I said that that is just not a place that I'm comfortable going with that character. Oh, really? So I was like. <laughs> Wow. I would have fought to keep that in. Surprise! <laughs> like, can we make her younger? Uh, uh, <laughs> so I was like, you know, that has to, he has to take the high ground on this. So right. I fought for that. Oh, and, you actually uh, did. Yeah. But, yeah. So that other thing is just gossip and conspiracy. Yeah. yeah. Was it's, there a little bit? It was it was your chick though? Like I don't like how it's getting crazy. Was yeah. there even a slight well, was, bit of that? But there was though. There wasn't anything. I mean, it was ABC. What was going to happen? Right. <laughs> it was like nothing going to happen. So. Right. Um, but sometimes I guess if you're playing somebody, you're like that just doesn't. It just doesn't work for me. Or it, I don't think that the character would do this. Well, or it's, it's just, part of the. Gross. You know, it's part of the process of television. So you, you know, you have there are arcs and things that are developed, but the writers will you know take stories where they want to take them and. You aren't as you sign up for something. You don't necessarily know where it's going to go. You have a kind of an idea, but sometimes it, they go on tangents, and I'm comfortable <laughs> saying, you know what? I'm not sure the guy would do. We're that. going you down know? an ugly path right yeah, now. I'm yeah, yeah. Child I'm child really How- I have to I make suggestions and stuff, but that's pretty typical for television. So. Television. So. so yesterday we had a, a our friend Michael Malice, who's an expert on North Korea, come in and he explained all North Korea stuff, oh, and he's one of the people. Who just flipped when he found out that you were coming? Yes, in. he did. Oh, so he insisted that I ask you a question from him. Oh yeah, he was going to send in questions. He, said, okay. he sent me. A, this is the question that you really. Well, wanted. He sent in one. to nuclear war. <laughs> yeah, he ah, said, you're asking uh, the wrong guy. <laughs> uh, so, so Michael Malice's theory is that the ending of the show meant that no matter where you and Cheryl Lee go or what you do, you'll still always be Agent Cooper and Laura Palmer. What do you think? Wow, the ending was pretty intense. I haven't seen it. Um, yeah, so I can't. I won't want to say. But um, do you think that that theory holds holds water, or is he? Or is Mike a blithering idiot? He, he could no, be yeah. a moron. No, I think <laughs> <laughs> doubtful. Because if he's uh, wrong about this, I'm rejecting all the stuff right. he told me about North Korea. Uh, Next, because this is all <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. At all. <laughs> um, it's I j- just say you know what. All theories are valid at this point because I don't know. I mean, I watched it and I came away scratching my head as well. So, um, the thing I, I do know is it's hard to see Cooper, who's always got things under control, suddenly in a moment where he's at a loss and he is not sure of himself or what's just happened. And that, I think, was more disturbing than anything else for me as a character. Just like, whoa, he's got to come back from that somehow. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, there have been no discussions about future shows or anything, so I don't know where they are with that. But Would you do if they did, if they were like, okay. If they did, yeah. I'm, I mean, I love season, that character. A season, a movie, whatever I love it is. The character well, we know you live. <laughs> well, again, spoiler. This isn't quite a spoiler because the show did air already. But right. yes, um, and that's by the way what you're promoting is Twin Peaks: The Return. The entire season is available on Showtime on demand. Yes, yes. Thank so you. if you want to go and watch, you can get there on the app too, and, yep. and all this that is stuff. Uh, yeah. Twin Peaks is actually the first show. I didn't even like think about this as you said that the whole season's available. Twin Peaks is the first show that I ever binge watched. Uh, this is before Netflix. My my friend Katie, who Dave, you know, uh, she literally had it on v- VHS. Oh yeah. yeah, she really was. But she had it on VHS. She blew everyone. That she Why are you taped. Saying these things. It's, it's very true. Well, just, we have one minute to wrap up. We have one minute to wrap up. Sorry, but she had them on VHS, literally from right. the original airing, and we right. binge watched them over the course oh, that's of like cool. three she days. Taped them off TV. Yeah, you, yeah. That's, that's, awesome. that's, that's a true. That's a true fan. If you have your VHS copies still, that's a true fan. I guarantee she still has them.